People often say that Slice of Life is a genre with no real substance, how it's just a collection of random things happening in a random order, compiled into something vaguely story-shaped, and to that I say, yeah, you're kinda right. But I still like it. It's one of those genres that is just perfect for unwinding after a hard day's work. Only, you've never done a hard day's work. <laughs> A little island of calm within the stormy seas of our society where you can just relax and watch imaginary characters enjoy having imaginary feelings like peace and happiness. You know, things you or I will never have. <laughs> it comes in three distinct flavours. Wholesome, horny and whatever the fuck Nichijo is. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid slotting neatly in all three so as to offer a little something for everyone, or potentially nothing for no one depending on your stance on fan service. There's a lot of that. The anime story, or lack thereof, is pretty standard stuff for Slice of Life, outside of the fact that the everyday life of one unfortunate, or potentially fortunate, Miss Kobayashi becomes somewhat less normal by the virtue of her having first saved the life of and then subsequently hiring a dimension travelling dragon by the name of Toru. Toru becomes Kobayashi's maid, more dragons and the occasional ex-deity show up here and there to spice things up and live the life of peace and quiet just enjoying the human world, doing human things. The end. <laughs> but that's only if you break it down to its very base essence, you know, doing the one thing that you should never do to a story. <laughs> It's like saying that in every Sean and ever, the good guy fights the bad guys and wins the end. No, we're not doing this again. The point being, while my very compressed depiction of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is technically correct, that being the best kind of correct, it's also missing the entire point of why we watch this anime that on the surface might not have any quote-unquote real substance to it. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a depiction of, if not the ideal daily life, then at least something that's more than just death and taxis, which, let's face it, makes it a pretty magical time already, but throw in some potentially world-ending scaly beasts in this shape of cute anime girls, and you add a whole other dimension to explore. Suddenly that trip to the shopping district becomes a little more than just buying groceries. It becomes an adventure, maybe not one of glory, but definitely one with an unforgettable story, as Toru lashes out at the speed of sound to apprehend a purse snatcher, shattering the very pavement in a move that would be perfectly at home in a battle shonen. You might expect that this act of communal service, of apprehending a criminal, would make her the hero of the day, and yes it does, eventually. But just moments before, Toro was warned to not stick out as differences scare people, and she, desperate to live as just another member of society, just did something no human being would ever be capable of, and now everyone is staring at her in stunned silence. It's an impactful scene, getting more and more so as every agonizing second stretches while you watch both Kobayashi and Toro herself begin to panic. Has she gone too far? Did she just lose the trust and friendship of these people? Do they fear her now? And then the tension is finally triggered in a mass of applause as the people who've become Toru's friends in the shopping street cheer for her heroism. Me, but that just means that it still leads to nothing. <clears throat> now that that's over with, did I mention that the show looks absolutely stunning? Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is one of the masterpieces created by the beloved and sadly very tragic Kyoto Animation, and well, the results speak for themselves, and while I generally don't really like talking about the visuals of an anime, since, you know, doing a review at least twice a month, it gets really fucking repetitive really quickly to just say that something looks cool, but this looks goddamn cool, so it's different. From the detailed but grounded backgrounds to the simple everyday actions as the characters live their lives, to the fight scenes where when asked about the size of the animation budget, someone at Kiani replied with, yes. <laughs> it looks damn right perfect. <sighs> yes, even that. Look at these characters, what comes to mind? No. Okay, fine. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid can be a little horny at times. A lot horny, actually. And sometimes it's... Yeah, you get the picture. 
It's not all sunshine and rainbows, but I personally have a thick skin and at the end of the day it didn't deduce from my ability to enjoy the character interactions whenever they weren't focused on needing Horny Bat 9000. The cast revolves around the Kobayashi household consisting of, surprise surprise, Miss Kobayashi herself, the human and parent figure, Toru, the dragon of destruction become maid, and Kanakamui, a child dragon whose role is essentially to be Kobayashi's adoptive daughter, plus in season 2 Iruru, another dragon of warfare and all things apocalypse, who is more or less the older sister for Kanna. On paper this might seem like the end of the world waiting to happen, one of their friends is even the cursed dragon Fafnir, who when not being a game otaku seems only seconds away from killing every human in sight, but that just never happens, instead you just get family life and genuine personalities slowly growing closer to each other as they exist together. It may not be exactly what you'd call a normal family dynamic, but you get the idea. The show itself is split into short stories that mostly don't directly correlate into any grand story arc being told, beyond the character dynamics evolving as they learn to love each other, platonically. <laughs> mostly. Even so, things do progress, and like in any close-knit group of people, or, well, dragons, there's also tension between the characters, both in the present and because of their shared past. It's a nice environment where each member of the cast feels like they've had a life before the show and didn't just pop into existence with some half-assed tragic backstory as the anime began, even if some of their pasts are a closely guarded secret. Why do we watch Slice of Life? Because it's the distillation of those days when life feels truly worth living. You know, when you are simply glad that you exist in this place at this time, but it's a constant barrage of those moments, ideally happening to characters you feel a genuine connection to, and that's present here in all of its glory. Usually, at least. Sure, not all the skits are created equal, and sometimes you just get silly action sequences, which, while being a true glimpse to the animator's art, tend to feel a little disjointed from the rest of the anime. On top of them, there are also those flavor text bits that need to exist for something actually important to happen later, but as they are taking place, you aren't quite sure as to why they're there or if they were even truly necessary. These are then added onto by some very short bits, usually towards the end of an episode, and these vary from further reinforcing something that happened earlier in the episode or just as funny quips. Usually about Elma's indecision in regards to what to eat that day, and while these do often take place in an episode that has discussed some heavier topics, where they serve as a small breather, they too can get a little… dull. Especially since the Elma ones just feel like repeating the same joke ad nauseum. And in case you were wondering, no, I am not going to talk about the localizer controversy surrounding some of the people who worked on Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. But I would definitely watch the show in the Japanese original. The dub isn't bad per se, and Kobayashi herself keeps the same deadpan delivery in both. But for me, Toru is just... how do I put this nicely? Terribly American cartoonsy. America, fuck yeah! You know that... <laughs> doing a cute voice now because this character is cute. And to me, that is both super fake and incredibly annoying nine times out of ten, but your mileage may vary. Still, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is one of those shows you should absolutely watch. It's very easy to get into, and while it does things that are very anime, it's still a newbie-friendly show, and all of you grizzled veterans will definitely enjoy it. But if Slice of Life isn't your thing, well, I'm sorry you have a sad life. As for myself, I decided to rewatch and review it on a whim, and boy am I glad I did. It's two seasons, both of which are really fun, as well as tons of specials of varying quality. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this, subscribe for more anime goodness, and a big thank you to both of my channel members, RC Rally and Speedy Boy. If you would like to be the third member of this illustrious list, channel membership is open, and you can join or not, up to you. Anyway, with this, I have been Cheese, and I hope to see you next time. Ta-ta for now.